So this is a wall tent that I just recently purchased and uh, it came with <clears throat> these aluminum tent poles which I found actually work very well. Uh, they're adjustable, they're lightweight, but my issue was <clears throat> they'd only pack down to about this tall, a little bit taller than that, um, which was a little bit too tall for my liking. I wanted to be able to, I want this tent and all the components to be able to fit into one bag and be able to store it and transport it that way. And that wasn't gonna work with this pole. So I went ahead and made some tent poles out of wooden dowels that uh, can break down into two pieces and they break down much shorter. Should be able to fit these in a bag just fine along with the tent and it's the components. And I'm gonna show you guys in this video how I made these tent poles. All right, well, I decided to come down to the basement just because it's too hot to be working outside right now. But first of all, let's look at the uh, materials that I've got to put these tent poles together. Uh, so I purchased all these materials at my local hardware store. Uh, just whatever they happen to have on hand, I grabbed whatever I thought I could use. Uh, so these are pine dowels. Um, when I was at the store, I didn't even look to see what sizes they were, honestly. Uh, I just kind of matched up whatever I thought was the best size, and that was about it. But if you're interested in uh, replicating what I've done here, this is a 1 and 1 8 inch by 36 inch dowel. Uh, pine is not my first, uh, my wood of choice for this. It's a little soft in my opinion, but it's all I had. Uh, at the hardware store, so this is what I decided to go with. So I've got four of these total. You know, one pole is made up by two dowels because it breaks in half. I've also got this two-inch copper coupler, I believe is what it's called. Found that in the plumbing section. So this will be used for uh, the fitting part for fitting both of the poles together. Uh, I actually grabbed the dowels while I was at the store and made sure that they fit into the coupler before purchasing them just to make sure that there wasn't any you know, loose fitting parts or any extra work I'd have to do and these actually fit very snugly inside of the coupler. I've also got these small brass nails and these will be used to pin on the coupler onto one of the dowels. I also got a door hinge pin that I'll be using for the top of the dowel. We'll go through a little bit more details on how we're gonna design that. And I also got these little push pin hangers. So I wanted to get something so I can hang a lantern on or something like that. So I just got these little hooks that uh, should work just fine. They're kind of a neat little design. And I also borrowed some paste finishing wax that uh, I didn't want to paint these poles. I kind of like the natural color of them, but I wanted some kind of protection on them, so I'm just putting this wax on it, and so hopefully that uh, helps protect the wood so it doesn't rot. And then I've just got various tools that I'll be using. Uh, i got a hammer, drill, chisel, saw, file, and a tape measure. Probably should have a pencil too. Um, and then I've got some drill bits and a piece of sandpaper, and I'll show you what uh, I'll be doing with all those. But the first thing we're gonna do, um, we're not gonna cut off any excess until the very end. Uh, first, we're going to work on the pieces, or the ends that will be going into the coupler. So first, I'm gonna figure out which ends seem to fit the best, because these dowels, believe it or not, are not all exactly the same size. Alright, I think we've got our ends picked out. I'm going to cut a slanted edge into each dowel so that when they fit together they can only fit one way and it's you know, it's going to be a little tough because the surface is actually flat and I'm using this it's just a camping saw type thing. Not ideal, but it's what I have and that's what I'm going to use. I use it on the other ones that seem to work fine. Just, so first of all what I did was I measure the coupler, which is just under two inches. So I want these dowels to meet in the middle. I 
to put it right at about, I'm going to put it just under an inch. This is where a pencil would have come in handy, but I didn't grab one. I'm just going to double check that length against the one that I already made. It's pretty close. I am by no means getting this exact. If you're good with woodworking, then you know what you're doing. And by all means, make it more exact. It'll actually probably fit better, and it will fit better. So then what I did was, and this is really hillbilly woodworking style here, but uh, I put it at the angle so that the bottom of the dowel is on the ground. I'm going to cut a straight line all the way to the ground from my mark. I'm just using a chisel to finish that off. We've got a pretty flat surface there. Alright, that looks pretty good. My best one so far. If you really want is to get that surface as flat as you can and get that cut so it angles from your mark all the way up to the very edge of the dowel there. That's what I was having issues with was cutting all the way up to the edge of the dowel. I was having a little flat surface on there because I wasn't cutting it all the way. But this one actually turned out pretty good. I am not a woodworker by any means. But I can get by. We'll do the other one. I'm going to make another mark. About an inch, a little bit less. Forgot I wanted to check and make sure this fits well enough in the coupler here. That actually fits real good. I think that'll work. But you want to remember that when you're cutting the, these slants here. So this is about two inches. I made this cut here uh, a little less than an inch because you got to leave a little bit of, a, of space here so you can uh, drill your holes and nail it into the uh, one of the dowels. And that's another reason why I've got the extra length. There's probably about four inches of extra length on the ends of each pole. And if you make a mistake you can fix it. second one did not turn out nearly as well as the first one, so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of chiseling to get that uh, flush. There's a pretty big gap there. just about there. Like I said, I'm, I am not really a woodworker, though oddly enough I enjoy chiseling. So if there's a, a way that you know of that would make this process simpler, by all means do that. This is a lot of extra work here, but I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of weird like that, but let's make sure that fits. Just about there. There we go. That's pretty straight. Uh, pretty happy with that, I think. So now I'm going to 
take a piece of coarse sandpaper and uh, we're just going to flatten down the ends a little bit better. Let's line these up again, make sure they look like they're going to fit. Not perfect, but that, that'll work. All right, I'm also, before I proceed with anything else, I'm also going to make sure that these fit inside the coupler as well. Yeah, that turned out even better than the first one did. I will say another thing with this coupler. I wish it was double the length that it is, the two inches, the four inches would be better because it just gives more stability. But the way it is right now, that should work pretty good. So next we got to secure the coupler to one of the dowels. All right, so I'm going to put four nails in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark four holes where those holes should be. I want them as close to the edge as I can without getting too close. I'm going to secure it with the hammer and I'm going to drill the hole. Okay. While we're drilling I'm just going to make sure that they're all opposite sides of each other. All right, now that all four holes are drilled, I'm going to take this uh, half-rounded file and I'm going to file down the drilled-out edges. And then you take the dowel that you're going to attach the coupler to, and I'm going to try to secure it so that the holes are just below where that angle starts. And then I'm going to grab four nails. And nail a couple into the dowel. Okay, and now our coupler is secured to the dowel. Do another check here and make sure we're good. Well, those pieces actually fit very well together. This one turned out better than the first one. But you can feel if you twist it back and forth, it shouldn't move much. And this one doesn't hardly move at all. And there's a tiny little bit of give, but not really much. Which means that both surfaces are flat enough that there's they're not rolling on top of each other. That one turned out pretty good. Pretty happy about that. Alright, next thing we're going to do is the top pin on the top portion of the dowel. Now when I originally cut the first piece, uh, what I did was I measured the original metal pole and then I took that measurement and then the measurement of the two dowels that I put together and I subtracted it, cut that number in half and I think it turned out to be four inches cut off of both ends if I remember correctly. However, I kind of messed up, I think it was I think it was this dowel. I ended up cutting a little extra off. Uh, plus I want these dowels to be the same height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the second dowels off of the first set of dowels that I made. Make my measurement where it needs to be cut. And I'm going to cut the top off. Measure it again, just to double check. It should be good. Now there's the top portion of the dowel cut down to size. And we're looking good. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole into the top where the uh, uh, hinge pin is going to go in. Before I do that though, I'm going to do a little bit of work on this hinge pin. So what I did on the first uh, tent pole was just buy a little marks in it. I designed these little marks so to help keep the pin from coming out the top. It just kind of grabs onto the side of the wood a little bit. Okay, so we've got a few notches in there just to try to help 
prevent it from coming out of the hole that we're going to drill. I also kind of filed down the top of it as well so it fits in the hole a little bit better. Alright, so I'm using a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the hinge pin. And I'm going to drill a hole in the top, trying to keep it as straight as possible, which can be difficult a little bit sometimes. gonna test the size it's too small still uh, so I'm gonna go the next size up and just drill this hole out a little bit wider and we got our hole in there fits pretty good and we're just gonna hammer it right down in there Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my file and I'm just going to file off the edges on the top of the door pin there. Alright, <clears throat> so that takes a few minutes to get that done. But basically what I, I don't want is there to be any kind of a lip on the top. I want it to be all smooth. I uh, don't want it to be pointy at all, or sharp or anything like that, but I'm going to just go ahead and round off the edges. Take my piece of sandpaper and kind of smooth it down a little bit. That should be pretty good right there. Next thing I'm going to do is as you can see on this tent pole I'm going to taper it down a little bit uh, so I'm going to try to keep them looking fairly similar the tapering starts right about there I think so I'm also going to use the chisel to take off more wood it's just a little bit quicker that way and then I'll finish it off with the, uh, the file Okay, well that's a uh, finished product there for the, the top piece of the tent pole. It's not perfect, a little bit off. <clears throat> yeah, it'll stay. And it'll do the job just fine, doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, next I gotta cut down the bottom part of the pole, cut that down to size. So, what I'm going to do, since it's gonna be hard to line these up that well, maybe won't be that hard but I want to get these exact as possible <clears throat> as far as the height goes on these tent poles I'm gonna put together the first set I'm gonna measure that uh, 63 and a half I'm gonna put this set together Measure that. 67 and a half. So 67 and a half minus 63 and a half is 4. So I'm going to cut 4 inches off the bottom. Okay, so technically this pole is done. It's been cut down to size. This one fits very well. I'm very happy with this one. But I'm going to put the wax on first and then put those pins on then we'll be completely done. All 
All right, they're all waxed up. Um, still drying, but I'm just gonna do the last step here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is put that push pin hanger uh, on the pole here. First of all, figure out kind of what the what height I wanted at. That should be good right there, I think. So there it is. Put the little hanger piece in there. It looks kind of nice, actually. All right, now that our poles are done, we gotta go put up the tent and see what they look like. All right, now that uh, both poles are completely done, I'm gonna show you guys what they look like with the tent um, installed. Um, like you'd see them with the tent set up. So I went ahead and put the more stable tent pole in the front because it doesn't wobble as much as the first one I made. Um, I wanted that in front because people will be going past this pole a lot. It's going to be bumped around a lot. So I wanted the more stable one to be in the front. Um, I'm going to stick this one in the back and show you guys what this one looks like in the back. All right, let's see what this back pole looks like. All right, so here's the back pole. It's fairly straight. Got the uh, two hooks on it. I'm probably gonna buy some more of those. Uh, those are kind of nice for keeping stuff off the ground, clothing, gear, whatever. Uh, sealed off at the top pretty good. The grommet isn't too, uh, or the top of the pole isn't too small that it's sticking through the grommet. Uh, here's one thing I wanted to show you with this one. This is why I put it in the back and this is why it's very crucial that you get that the two faces of both poles with that slanted angle that they're as flush as you can possibly get them this is not I did not do a very good job on that one you see how much play there is in there there should be hardly any play at all um, not much I can do about that now I'd have to take the coupler off and completely redo the faces of the, the poles which would also shorten the length so keep that in mind when you're making these if you have a a better way you can make those angles so that they're completely flush with each other see what you can do to avoid this I just want to show you the uh, pins on the top that I made out of the hinge pins those work pretty good I didn't want them too tall and there's no reason to have a huge pin sticking out the top so perfect height for what I wanted it to be the tent's pretty Pretty sturdy. Um, not nearly as much play in the front pole, which is why I already explained I got that one in the front. Um, something I wanted to show you quick too with these little hangers. Is I got this uh, little candle lantern. So you can hang like a lantern or something like that in the front, which is pretty cool. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I really just made this video because I wanted to provide you guys with some inspiration and ideas. If you're thinking about getting some wooden tent poles for a similar project like this, the cost for the materials for both poles together was right around $55, which isn't terrible, but with inflation going on right now, it's August of 2022. Um, I think that's probably a little pricier than it should be in my opinion. And like I said, I'm not a woodworker by any means. This is a uh, a new thing for me. I've never tried anything like this before. Um, and actually turned out pretty good. So if you've never done anything like this before, you can make it work. Definitely can. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I'll answer any questions you might have uh, to the best of my ability. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.